Hello, welcome to today's video. If you watched last week's video, you were probably expecting this to be the Wolverine Claws tutorial. However, that's gonna be coming out next week now because today is a sponsored video. So today's video is sponsored by a company called Rendero. They're a cloud-based computing company based in Poland and they got in touch with me to say, would you like to make a video on our service? I should probably say they did pay me to make this video, but they haven't told me what to say. So everything that's gonna follow is entirely my own opinion and what I actually thought of the service. If you're interested in trying Rendero yourself, there's a free 30 day free trial and they also give you some credits when you get started. So you don't have to pay anything immediately and you can just try out the service see if it's for you and then if you like it you can carry on using it so what we ended up doing is they gave me an account with some credits on it and I rented their best machine for five hours and I used it to render a really, really intensive scene that I made in Blender. And to do a comparison, I also rendered the same scene on my personal PC and also my MacBook Pro, although we'll get more into that in a second. <laughs> so let's take a look at the scene. So this is the scene that I created. It's just a cube with a particle system on it. And then I also have this bigger cube, which has a volumetric shader on it, which creates some Atmos. And then I have a spotlight up here, which is kind of like casting a shaft of light going through the volume. And then behind that, I just have this big, um, like half sphere. And this just has a few noise textures and stuff on it that I sort of mixed together and plugged into the normal and all sorts to kind of make this cool pattern on the background. And if we go into rendered view, you can see kind of roughly what it looks like, although it takes a million hours to render. This isn't the prettiest render I've ever made, but the idea is that I've put lots of things in here that will really push the rendering engine and make it struggle. So we have the volumetrics, obviously, as well as that, we also have some transmission shaders. So I've put a like glass kind of shader on half of the virus balls. And then the other half of the virus balls have this shader on it, which is basically full subsurface scattering. And what this is, is basically simulating fleshy textures, like how light penetrates into your skin slightly and illuminates from the inside. This is also notoriously difficult to render and you have to turn the samples up really high, otherwise it becomes extremely noisy in the render. And then I also added some depth of field in camera. I don't normally render my depth of field into the CG. I normally do it with the depth pass in Nuke. But again, rendering depth of field is more intensive. So I basically threw everything I could at this render to make it as difficult to render as possible and be as noisy as possible. So once that was all set up, I basically rendered this at 5,000 samples at 1080p. You can probably see even at 5,000 samples, there's still a bit of noise in here. I didn't use optics denoising for this. I thought that would kind of be cheating. And I think that's pretty much it. Okay, so how does Rendero actually work? The idea essentially is that you rent and control a computer over the internet for a certain amount of time. It's charged by the hour and you have a choice of multiple different types of machines that start from fairly basic to extremely powerful. To set it up, the first thing you have to do is create a drive. This acts as a link between your computer and the computer that you're renting. And you put all of the files you want to use on this and it's like a link between the two. So for example, I uploaded the blend file onto this and then I was able to access it on the computer that I was controlling and then bring it into Blender, open it and press render. Once you make a name for the drive and set it up, it takes about 10 minutes for the system to prepare it. So you just kind of go away, make a sandwich and come back. And then once you've done that, you create a computer so you create a name for it and then it gives you the options of all the different machines they offer. There's four different types as you can see and they have a list of all the specs and what they're generally used for. So for example, the basic one is mostly used for editing, graphic design and basic modeling in 3D. It's got a fairly simple CPU, it's got 32 gigabytes of RAM and one Nvidia T4 graphics card with 16 gigabytes of video memory. Keep in mind that this is the most basic machine and it has a $3,000 graphics card in it so they're all really powerful. And then the far end of the spectrum, which is the one I use, is the Turbo Machine. And this one's $10 an hour. It's a bit more pricey and you probably wouldn't need this unless you were doing something really crazy. But I wanted to use the best that the system could offer just to demonstrate how cool it is. So this one has a much, much more powerful CPU. It has 192 gigabytes of RAM, which I've never had a machine with that much RAM in before. That's crazy. And the coolest feature, in my opinion, is the four NVIDIA T4 GPUs, which comes to a total video memory of 64 gigabytes. I've never rendered with more than one GPU in Blender before. And I have to say this was bonkers. It was so fun. One thing they mentioned to me when we were on the video call setting it up is you can quite easily use one of the more basic machines while you're working and then just pay for a more expensive one for rendering. So you might want to buy the turbo one for two hours, for example, to render your whole sequence. But if you're just doing some 3D modeling and stuff, that's probably overkill. So you could go with one of the much cheaper machines to save some money. Once the machine is set up, it appears in your computers tab and then you can activate it and you have to download the client so you can control it from your computer. And then the client just launches itself and then you have control of the computer. As you can see, I found where the Blender file was saved that I previously uploaded. Currently, the machines don't come with any software installed, so I had to download Blender, but obviously it's really simple because it's open source. So it downloaded in a couple of minutes. I just installed it and opened it up and it was ready to go. So I opened up Blender, imported the Blend file, the user preferences and stuff defaulted to use all four of the GPUs, which was very exciting. And then, yeah, I just hit render. You can see it's rendering four big tiles at the same time, and that's each of the four GPUs, each doing one tile. So like I said, once that was finished rendering, I also rendered the same file on my PC. And for reference, my PC has 32 gigs of RAM, an i7 processor and a GTX 1080 in it. And then for the real litmus test, I also tried to render the same file on my MacBook Pro. And obviously that's just using the CPU because MacBooks don't have a dedicated graphics card. 
You can see here in the side-by-side -side comparison the difference between my PC in live rendered view and the one that I was controlling. This is obviously a really heavy scene and you can see how much more responsive the live render view is on the machine that has multiple GPUs compared to my home PC. So that's all very cool, but what were the actual results? It's safe to say I was really surprised. I knew that my PC wasn't going to be quite as good, but I didn't realize the gap would be this big. So my MacBook Pro, the estimated render time, and I say estimated because I rendered for two and a half hours and it had only done about 30%. Okay, I've been rendering for two and a half hours on the MacBook and there's a mere six hours and 56 minutes left. And also in that time, my MacBook sounded like a helicopter because the fans were going so crazy. And I imagine if I left it going for nine hours, it probably would have melted into a puddle of aluminium. So probably not advisable. My home PC rendered it in just over two and a half hours. Remember this is an absolutely scorching 5,000 samples and it rendered the whole frame in two hours and 33 minutes. And then the absolute beast, the turbo machine on Renderer, rendered the entire frame in just 47 minutes. Obviously the one that has four GPUs is gonna be quite a lot faster, but it rendered it in a third of the time. I really wasn't expecting the difference to be that big, so it was a massive eye opener for me. Personally, because I'm fortunate enough to have quite a good PC, this probably isn't something I would need that often. But actually the main reason I said yes to this video and the reason it interested me is because I get questions all the time in the Discord server about people that don't have very good PCs, about optimizing their renders, other options for rendering. People have mentioned cloud computing services in there a few times. So this service I think is perfect for people like that. If you haven't got a particularly good machine but you've got an okay internet connection, you can rent one that's much more powerful, control it over the internet, and do all of the work on there. I didn't show much of me actually controlling the remote machine in this video, but I have to say I was really impressed. Most of you probably know this, but I do work professionally as a visual effects artist, and the company I work at at the start of the pandemic sent everyone out these little boxes that um, basically let us control our machines at work. And those boxes plug in with an ethernet cable, and they're supposed to do a lot of the heavy lifting so that the lag between, you know, like my keyboard and mouse and the computer at work, it's almost non-existent. So that's pretty up there in terms of the technology for remotely controlling computers. And I have to say the Renderer one was actually quite a bit better. I have a really good internet connection, so that probably helped, but it literally did feel like I was just controlling my PC. Really, really impressive. So thank you very much to Renderer for the opportunity and for sponsoring this video. Hopefully this video will be helpful for the people in the Discord that were asking about remote machines, and maybe if you were just generally interested in how it works. Like I said at the start, the Wolverine tutorial is now coming out next Monday, so keep your eyes peeled. Thanks very much for watching again, and I'll see you very soon.